Welcome to another episode of the Path Talk Show. And today I have an exciting guest. He is the founder of Beta Media and the Beta Project podcast. He's done over 300 episodes and he's an extraordinary person. Welcome, Nick Beta. Last minute call up, but pleasure to be here. That's it. <laughs> I was meant to have like Emmanuel here a bit earlier, but he ended up having a car accident right before actually coming here. So Nick is an excellent replacement and he has an extraordinary story to share as well. Yeah, and it's, it's funny that I just told you before around Emmanuel having a car accident today and then me yesterday saying, oh, I need to make more content. I need to jump on more, more podcasts and here we are today. So it's it's weird how the world works in mysterious ways like that. <laughs> it is. And it was funny. I was having this thought a bit earlier. I was like, whatever happens if my like guest wasn't able to make it, maybe I would be able to use Nick as a, a guest as well. And funny enough, with what happened to Emmanuel it just happened and it was like everything just manifested itself into this moment. And here we are. That's it. And I'm excited to get into it. I haven't been a guest on a potty ooh, maybe since the beginning of the year. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that was with one of your clients. I'm trying to remember now. No, was it with no, Jake? it wasn't. It was with Doxy. That's right. Yeah. Man, he goes for a good two hours and two hours and a half sometimes. Yeah. And when you sink, sink into his couch, you're just like. Oh, yeah, exactly. Nice. <laughs> you just <laughs> want to fall asleep sometimes. Yeah. But no, that was probably, that was, yeah, the last potty I did. Wow. And then I've just kind of just focused on my own podcast and the business. But now this back end of the year, I'm like, I need to start making more content, putting myself out there more because I've, <clears throat> since that podcast, I've learned and I've grown so much, but I haven't been really sharing it. So now it's time to kind of step out there and start putting it more. So yeah, exciting. Absolutely. And I'm happy you jumped on the podcast and able to share it. So Take us to the fresh beginning when you actually started back in 2018 or 19 with your podcast. Back into 2019, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> to give a bit of context, so at the time I was at university, I was studying sports and exercise science. So I have a background in like rugby league. My whole goal was to play in the NRL, had a couple of injuries, ended up losing love for the game. And I remember one time I was at my physio and he goes, have you ever thought about like strength and conditioning? Because then you can still be in the sport, be with athletes and health and fitness is like obviously a big part of your life. And I thought about it, oh, fuck, this might be cool. I just went to uni, did it for a year and a half and I realized, yeah, this is not what I want to do. At the time, I started following, you know who Gary Vee is? Yes. So I started following this guy, like, who, the, who is this American entrepreneur guy but he seems pretty cool couple of weeks after I started following him, as we spoke about before, how the world works in mysterious ways, I get an ad pop up on Instagram, Success Resources, Gary V, Sydney, 2019. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm buying tickets to it. I bought tickets, skip uni. My parents are like, why the hell are you skipping uni? Was that in Success Resources? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was there. Were you? Yeah. Okay. That event put me on the path that I'm on now. I remember sitting in the crowd and there was other amazing speakers there too, but Gary Vee came out last. And the way that guy can just captivate a crowd and have the impact that he has, I'm like, ooh, imagine if I could do something like this. At the time, I'm like, I have one voice saying, nah, you can't do that because I struggled a lot with anxiety and going into new environments and putting myself out there. I really lacked self-confidence. I was just staying in my comfort zone. So I had that little that little birdie saying, nah, you can't do that. And then the other bird goes, man, if you want to have an impact in this world, if you want to truly make a change and go on down a different path, you need to draw the line in the sand today, not let anxiety take over, not let the fear of judgment of other people hold you back. You just need to go out there and, and make a fucking change. That next week, I dropped out of university. I bought my first camera, started vlogging. Gary V popped up again. Everyone needs to have a podcast. Didn't even know what a podcast was. Didn't even listen to podcasts. My my intuition just said, buy a microphone, which is the one right behind you. Wow. That is, is my... This one? Yeah, that one right there. 
show it to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first microphone that I bought from JB Hi-Fi, plugged into a really old laptop and recorded my first episode, which I, I cringe every time I go back and listen to it. I think it's like two minutes long. It was just like an mm. intro saying, hey, I'm starting a podcast. Took me over an hour to record because I thought it had to be perfect, kept stuffing up, but I put it out there. Mum was the biggest supporter, always watched and listened to all my podcasts. I always cringe because I, I ran it from my parents' house in a spare bedroom and I'd be in there working on the podcast and then mum would be playing out loud the previous episode of my podcast. I'm like, fuck, stop listening to it out loud. I hated the sound of my own voice. But if you're ever listening, mum, like I love you and I really appreciate all the support that you gave me towards this and, and being you know my number one fan. But, man, the podcast just grew away. Like, wow. I would never have thought that I would be in a position now, five years down the track, 300 plus episodes, being able to build a business off the back of it. I, yeah, I would never have thought that. And the people that I'm, I'm able to talk to and, and the network that I have, it's, it's been truly incredible. And I say this to every single person that comes through this studio. Podcasting is, for me personally, is the number one personal development journey that you'll go on. That's remarkable and it's amazing how much a mother can love you and support you because you are pretty much their last love when it comes to being able to support you in your journey and they're there for you no matter what and that's such a great thing. And do you look back when you see your first podcast now and appreciate you actually started it? 100%. I have so much gratitude for that version of me for stepping out of my comfort zone to actually pressing record for editing it for releasing it because if i didn't do that i don't know where i would be i'd probably be still just working not enjoying life and it's it's funny i say still working because i'm working now and it's in the same business i work in my family's air conditioning business so I'm still working, but my day-to-day life is a lot different because it's it's my mind's so focused on the podcast, on the business. So like this is this is my, my purpose. I've really truly found my purpose. And in saying that the podcast is not the purpose, it's the connection piece of it. I love connecting people. I love having deep conversations. I love adding value. I love being able to be in service because that's what we're doing here today. We're in service. The people that listen to this, they may be going through a tough time. They may be able to relate to what we're going through and our experiences and through us sharing our stories and being vulnerable and opening up and sharing our wisdom and our knowledge and what we've gone through, it may give them a different perspective on life. and be like, hey, if these two guys can talk about this certain topic, they've gone through that. This is how they did it. This is how they got out the other side. I can implement that into my own life to help them be a better version of themselves. So in a way, podcasting, like we're in service of others. We're, we're helping people. We're connecting and that's what I love about it. It's really, it's really shifted my mindset towards this whole space because I used to think if you're getting into it, you have to have all the views, all the subscribers. There's so much more to that now and – my whole business model is not built on subscribers and views. It's about, hey, you get to have the conversations that you would not normally have, right? To get right. an hour of someone's time that why would they give you time if it's not to do a podcast or to add value or to, to get content, whatever the case is, but you're able to sit across from someone and ask them questions that you would not normally get to ask. So you, you get to have the conversations that you don't normally get to have. You get the personal learning and the growth. You build your network. You, you know, get potential business opportunities that come off the back of it. For me, I, I started Better Media off the back of my podcast because I built this studio purposely for my podcast and I, I was like, I don't always use it. Imagine if other podcasters could utilize this space as well. Started a business. I've built it now to a point where 
I'm only working three days a week in my day job. I told you before I went from 2K a month to now 7K a month in the short span of two to three months. So imagine what the next six to 12 months looks like. And I've told you like the vision for this better media, this whole space is to move into a warehouse space, multiple sets and just really be the podcasting hub of Western Sydney. Like that's, that is my big goal and my purpose behind this is just to connect people and build an awesome community of like-minded individuals and, you know, even connecting yourself and, and stodgy, like that wouldn't have happened if I didn't create this business. So we're building relationships here. We're building something deeper than just the podcast that you come in and record weekly or fortnightly. Absolutely agree. And you're just doing remarkable things. And it's good to see that you are changing the space by being able to give podcasters opportunity to be able to have a voice and also have their own show. So out of the 300 episodes you've done, what are the most five valuable lessons you've learned in podcasting through your guest? Oh. So five lessons they've taught me. Yes. Oh, yeah. Put me on the spot, mate. <laughs> five lessons. <sighs> what comes to me right now is one, gratitude. Be grateful that you're able to have these conversations. You're able to pick the brains of someone else and ask them the questions because the way I come into conversations is like, okay, what am I going through right now and how can this person in a way help me? So if I have someone that's talking about, you know, healing relationships, like intimate relationships or relationships with parents, whatever the case is, I ask questions that I want kind of help with in a selfish way but also knowing that I'm not the only one that's going through it. And if you can come into that with my second point of being authentic that's a big thing that I've learned is just be yourself be authentic and that's what makes for the best conversations so I'd say gratitude authenticity vulnerability is a big thing that I've learned is if you can open up and be vulnerable it creates a safe space for other people to do the same thing and I'm a big believer in vulnerability breeds vulnerability so through us having this conversation it's going to allow other people to go hey as i said before these guys talking about it why can't i and it just creates a a healthy cycle of people just opening up and speaking about it because the the way society is now especially men we do bottle up a lot of stuff we do let it implode internally the best way to push through a lot of things is to talk about it because you've probably gone through it. We create these scenarios in our head where our mind plays tricks on us. It makes things like 10 times worse than what it actually is. And then if you speak it out, if you write it out, you go, what the, f- why was I thinking that? Like it was, it's never going to work out that way. So why do I think it's going to be the worst thing ever? Like we, we always in our mind go to the worst thing. But instead of just speaking it out, writing it out, you just realize, hey, like what we create doesn't mean it's going to you know, become reality. So gratitude, vulnerability, authenticity. Ooh, what else have I learned? Be present. That's something that I struggled with, especially in the beginning when – I did struggle with anxiety a lot and my mind was just going 100 miles an hour. Just sit, just be present. Just let your curiosity take over because if you do the things that I said prior of just be authentic self, be grateful, be vulnerable, the conversation is going to take care of itself. So I would also say in, in being present, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. You see a lot of podcasters, fucking the host just yaps, 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 yaps and doesn't let the guest actually speak. Mm, that's true. So it's like 
let the person actually get their point across and then you can come in and compliment that. It's not just like jumping in and trying to get your point across and, and making the podcast about you because, yeah, you are the host, but it's not about you. It's about the person that you get on and asking the questions that you want to ask and getting their value and their knowledge and actually actually having a conversation, not just question, question, question. That's how it used to be. I remember when I first started, I'd have two pages of just questions and I'd just go, question, oh, yeah, question. It was not a conversation. I'm sure my guests hated it. <laughs> but looking back now, reflection has been massive for me of you have to start somewhere. And I wouldn't be the podcast host, the communicator that I am today if I didn't start there, if I didn't even start the podcast. So losing track a bit, but what do we go through? Gratitude, authenticity, vulnerability, uh, being present. And then I'd say curiosity is a big one. Mm. So yeah, just, just being curious. Yes, have your, your basic structure of how you want the podcast to run. But coming back to what I said before is if you do the previous things that I mentioned and you be present, your curiosity is going to naturally take over and it's actually going to be a conversation. It's not just going to be question, answer, question, answer. So really tap into your curiosity and just let your mind go and let it free and be like, okay, cool. What he said was interesting. I've got to, you know, a counter question to that. And you just go from there. That's what makes, for me personally, that's what makes the best conversation. Uh, those are definitely valuable points. And when you were saying that, and even when I was on the way to coming here, I was thinking about purpose. And I'm sure you think about this when it comes to the beta project as well. I think of like the Path Talk Show. And I heard someone mention this the other day where when you're trying to, chase your purpose and you're doing something great like a starting a podcast it should be always greater than just yourself to help empower other people to become better versions of themselves where they potentially can be hopefully through one conversation they hear on a podcast or through a friend or wherever they receive this information from and for me I personally see it's a game changer when you can really see the point of view of not just always thinking about yourself, but having trust and faith that your purpose is bigger than just that. Yeah, it's being in service of others, which I mentioned before. And if you're being in service of others, if you add value to people and you help them, the rest of the things are going to take care of itself. The money's going to come, the followers are going to come, the subscribers are going to come, the business is going to grow because. You're putting other people, not first, but your your priority is being of service to them. And that's that's really important for what I do here with Better Media. It's like, how can I be of service to my clients? How can I create an experience for them so they keep coming back? They feel safe to open up. And talking about experience, that's a big thing for podcasters. You need to create experience for your guests. Right, whether that be catching up for lunch or a coffee beforehand and actually building a relationship and making them feel comfortable so you can come on and get the most out of them. Because if you just invite someone and go, hey, come on the podcast, they just rock up and you just dive straight in. It's like, oh, fuck, you can catch them off guard. Exactly. Right. So it's all about the guest experience. And in saying that, you want to – the environment that you film the podcast in is so important too. If you invite someone to a spare bedroom in your house, which I did, and yes, it does work for some people, but the day we live in now, this, what we're in now, is honestly the standard at every podcast should be. Because if you walk into someone's bedroom and they're just filming on an iPhone, you're like, are these guys really serious? Like, mm. come on. I've seen some interesting podcasts of people just starting it up and – they say, we do whatever we want and you just see them pulling out a bong, start smoking yeah. and doing some strange stuff. And it's like, I would never, ever, in my personal preference, would like to be on a podcast like that because it's more about them and more rather than the other person. 
So you said you obviously suffered through anxiety when you were younger and obviously your podcast does has a lot to do with mental health as well. What advice would you give someone, for example, who is suffering from anxiety and they turn to, for example, alcohol as a leaning front for their problems and they keep on drinking and they always spend more time in the future and in the past where they think, I wish I would have done this in the past, this, this, and this. And in the future, they create future scenarios from themselves that hasn't, haven't even happened yet. What advice would you give to that person who's suffering from those anxieties? First thing I would say is you mentioned the word suffering and I'm a big believer that suffering is a choice. We choose to suffer. We may experience anxiety. We may experience depression. But we choose to continue suffering through it. For me, I experienced a lot of anxiety. I let it control me to the point where if I was to go into a new environment, I would subconsciously make myself sick, like vomiting, dry reaching, shaky, cold, just so I could try and prevent myself going into that new situation. And what I realized is every time I stepped into that situation and I pushed past all the scenarios that I created in my own head, I realized why the fuck do I continue doing this? Why? None of these scenarios that I created in my head never happened. When I actually step out of my comfort zone and into a new environment and I meet new people, I actually enjoy myself. I actually grow and I have fun. So why do I keep doing this to myself time and time again? And a big shift in my mindset towards anxiety was I remember one time I was on, when I first started this journey, I was doing like Instagram lives and someone jumped on and I was talking about anxiety. That was the topic, anxiety. And someone jumped on and he goes, what if anxiety wasn't like a bad thing? Anxiety was actually a good thing and when it arises in your life, it was a sign of something that you need to go towards instead of run away from. And I thought about it for a second. I was like, that makes sense. Mm. Because every time that feeling of anxiety arises, it's usually something that I need to do but I'm scared to do it because it's new. But also in saying that, they've done studies where there's a massive correlation between being anxious or nervous and being excited. Same physiological, um, you know, symptoms of that, of the shivering and like jittery and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, imagine if I just reframed it in my head of instead of being anxious, I'm actually excited. And just that simple reframe of just saying, hey, nah, I may be experiencing a bit of like, anxiousness right now but i'm actually excited for this opportunity you're more inclined to step into it so a big thing for me is yeah don't remove the word suffering it's your choice to suffer change your perception on whatever you're going through we're talking about anxiety right now so change your perception reframe it of it's not a bad thing it's a good thing and even even a small thing of if i walk if i'm going into a new environment I'm looking at like all the ways I can escape from that environment, right? All the exits, what could go wrong. But it's not a bad thing because imagine if something did go wrong, I'm able to navigate that quite calmly while other people would be like, what the hell is going on? So it's understanding that we may be diagnosed, we may experience these these elements of life, this anxiety, this depression, but it's not all bad. You just got to use it and understand it to your advantage. So that's, that's a big thing for me is, yeah, just reframing it. And your example of going towards alcohol, it's like, where is that going to get you? If you continue to mask your pain through drinking in a way, making yourself numb, not feeling what's going on in your life, 
you need to sort your shit out. And some people are like, they walk around it very touchy. They're like, oh, you know, he's, he's gone through a rough period. He has trauma. And I understand that people go through all different things. I've gone through things. You've gone through things. And there's a lot of deeper work that people need to go through. But the first thing is instead of playing victim, actually taking ownership for your life because saying I'm suffering, playing victim, it's not going to get you anywhere. You need to take ownership. You need to go out there and, and seek the help that you need to seek. But that just starts from actually having a conversation. You're wearing an Are You a Kato shirt, right? That's all about conversations. This podcast is about conversations. So if we can sit here and have the conversation, we're not playing victim. We're not suffering. We're not bottling our shit up. If you're going through something and you share it, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll listen to you. I'll hold space for you. And if you want a solution, we can go through a solution. But if you just continue to internalize and implode, that's why we lose so many men. Because mm. they don't speak about shit. That's my take. No, it's great insight and great advice as well. And when you were talking about anxieties, it kind of brought me back to my competition days as well. And I remember hearing in a self-development event where there's two definitions of fear, F everything and run or you can face everything and rise. And there's been like many times myself where I felt like just pulling out of the competition and saying, ah, oh, I can always do it next time. But then there's another voice in your head saying you have to do it no matter how you feel. And once you're done, you will feel rewarded for actually going out there and doing it. Yeah. That, that fuck everything and run is just your bitch voice. It is. You have to build a relationship with that. And that's why I, um, I love running, but I also hate it at the same time because my bitch voice always comes out and it's like an internal battle. And for me, I'm a bit of a weirdo. Like I go down to the, the athletics track and just run loops just to like battle with my demons and I don't listen to headphones. Like I've done – Head noise. Yeah, I just embrace everything. Like even I did the Sydney Marathon last year. I've done marathons before. I don't listen to anything. I just listen to my – well, not listen to my bitch voice. I fight my bitch voice the whole time and when you come out the other side of it, you're like, fuck, that's awesome. Knowing that you push through, you didn't use external factors. It's just like it's on you. It is and it's so rewarding as well. I know – in the past when I was growing up wrestling, when we started to play music, when my coach wasn't there, we were having a good time. But as soon as my coach walked in the room, he always says, what is this? And he turns the music off. And throughout our childhood, we used to train without music, which gave us that discipline that we don't need it. We have ourselves. And like you said, you're continuously battling demons and you hate why you're doing it but you're so appreciative afterwards where you feel the love and passion for, for you. It was running and for me it was wrestling. Yeah, and, and through that you you figure out what like intrinsically down deep, like what is your driving force? Because music is just a motivating thing. You know, you listen to that pop-up song, you're like, oh, yeah, sweet, I'm going to run another K. But what happens when that's done? You're back to being in your head and it's like, okay, cool. Why am I actually doing this? What is my driving force? What am I drawing strength from here to continue putting my body through this when I could easily just stop? Like I remember a couple of – long time ago now, nearly four years ago now, my first marathon, we did it at midnight. We ran a one-kilometer loop around this lake, so 42 laps around this lake, and we had to run past our cars every lap. Wow. That was a mind fuck. Because at midnight or when it got to like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, ooh, I could easily just hop in my car and go home now but continued pushing on. And after that, man, I felt obviously physically sore but like on top of the world knowing that I pushed myself through that. It was such a fulfilling feeling knowing that you didn't be a bitch. Because as men, like – we need to put ourselves through those hard times, whether that be a training session, 
running a marathon, whatever the case is, we need to test our limits. We need to continue to build physically, mentally, spiritually. If not, what's our purpose? Absolutely. It's kind of funny too because I got asked this interesting question and it's interesting that you spoke about going to uni in 2019 and now what they're doing as part of a curriculum is a lot of these students actually have to start their own little podcast where they get marked and reviewed for how the episode went. So one of my grappling students ended up picking me for the assessment to ask this specific question. And she spoke about what is the difference between motivation and discipline and which one is more important in terms for athletic performance. But what I say to you, what is it more better for when it comes to normal performance? Like if you are running a business or your own personal journey or even still even athletics performance? I think they both go hand in hand. You need both of them. If you're having a bad day, you need a bit of motivation sometimes. But what's most important is that discipline to continue turning up each and every day, to get up each morning, go and train, to put your body through that because through that discipline, that's where you develop those habits. In the beginning, yes, you need a bit of motivation to get you off the couch, to go to the gym, do that first workout, that first run. Motivation is great. But if you don't have that intrinsic drive, you're not going to have the discipline to turn up each and every day. So, yes, you need both, but you need that discipline most importantly. 100%. And it's funny that you said that. I gave pretty much a similar answer and obviously – Growing up, seeing a lot of world champions, Olympic champions train, you can see that's where they drive off is discipline. And like you said, it's important at the start where you're finding the motivation where you are excited to go, buy new gear for your thing you're going to start if it's running or if it's wrestling or if it's MMA. And you just start watching these like motivational videos just to get yourself in the right mind frame. But what happens down the track when you feel like, okay, I've been doing this for a while, but I don't feel like going to training today. And I think that's what separates motivation to discipline is you have to go out and do it anyways. Because if you don't, if you rely too much on motivation, you'll never get it done because you only do it when you're motivated. But with discipline, you go and put in the work no matter how you feel. And that's what separates a champion compared to someone who comes second place to last place in my personal opinion. Yeah, I was just thinking about that now and I think about motivation and motivation is like you get motivated of the outcome, right? You do. I'm going to go win a gold medal. Like you're motivated to go do that. The discipline is being able to detach yourself from the outcome and just embrace the journey. Because the journey is the hard shit, right? But it's the most fulfilling thing. And whether you've reached that outcome or not, you'll, you'll know that you gave it your all because you kept turning up each and every day. And you know, if you want to be an Olympian, a business owner, it's not going to happen overnight. All good things take time. You have to continue putting in the work, getting 1% better each and every day. If not, you're not going to achieve much. So you can have all the motivation you want of, yeah, I'm going to build this massive business. I'm going to go to the gold medal, go to the Olympics, whatever the case is. But then you go, oh, I actually got to train for that. I actually got to start building a business, build a website, whatever the case is. Oh, that's too hard. I'll just look for the next thing to be motivated to do. It's just like a continuous cycle of, oh, I'm motivated. Oh, I'm not putting in the work for that. Oh, I'm motivated, not putting in the work. But I was like, no. Just embrace the journey, play the long game. Like doing a podcast for five years, 300 plus episodes, pretty sure the stats on now actually, 90% of podcasters don't even make it past episode 20. Mm. And then out of that remaining, 90% of them don't make it to like 50 or 100 or something. So for me to be at 300, I'm in the top percentile in the world. I'm pretty proud of that. And it just goes to show the 
the discipline it took to continue putting in the work, knowing or knowing or not knowing what the outcome would be. So I didn't really know the direction I wanted to go. I didn't know I was going to build a business off the back of it, but there was just that that internal pull within me of like just keep doing it because something's good going to come out of it. Don't know what it is, but you'll never know if you don't continue. So that's the big thing is like just keep chipping away. It's like that, that photo of they're, they're chipping at bricks and one person stops one brick before. All it takes is that one hit to break through and you step into that that life that you truly desired. But a lot of people fall short because they're not willing to play the long game. They're not willing to turn up each day and have the discipline. They're relying on motivation. They don't have that intrinsic fucking pull, that desire. Mm. That's what's most important. It's funny when you're talking about that. It kind of reminded me of a quote with exactly what you said just in a few words is – it's not about the outcome, it's about who you become in the process. And a lot of us don't tend to trust in that and we just want the outcome, we want the quick fix. And a lot of us nowadays, especially with how fast social media is and it's happening so quick, especially with Reels, um, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, People are always looking for that quick fix and they're not willing to put in the work in order to get the certain outcome like you achieved where you achieved reaching over 300 plus episodes. And throughout your journey because you decided to start Beta Media. Yep. So where did that thought pop in in order for you to start this business? So it popped in when I built this studio and... I realized I'm not always using it. Imagine if I had something like this when I first started. What if other podcasters can utilize it to help them grow their podcast, take it to the next level and have a professional setting instead of just sitting in front of an iPhone in a spare bedroom in their parents' house, you know? So that's where the concept came from. I didn't think it would amount to anything. I just put up an ad on Facebook Marketplace saying, hey, studio in Penrith, some people – is that how you found me? That's how I found yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Well, you found me on Facebook Marketplace. A couple of other people found me there too. And, you know, it's just – it's crazy how it's, how it's grown to now have the amount of clients that I have now, consistent clients. That's a big thing is like with any business is consistent income because it's great to have a client come in and then they just disappear for a month. It's like, Fuck. How are you meant to grow a business off that? So a big thing is like getting those consistent clients. And yeah, it's been a it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool journey. Now branching into the videography side of things too and creating that that whole package of coming and do your podcast or if you have a business, I can I can film that as well. And it's cool that I've been able to work with some awesome people and a lot of a lot of my clients a lot of my bigger clients have actually come from my own podcast them being guests on my podcast and me building a relationship and and trust with them and saying hey i've got this space i've got this service would you be interested and because i've already come in and built the relationship there they're more inclined to go that way so that's why i say Podcasting is massive for business. Mm. It's that, that top of funnel where you build a relationship, you build a connection, you get cool content out of it, have a great conversation and then off the back of it because you've done that, it makes it a lot easier to break the ice when it comes to selling your business but you're not even really selling it. You're just like, hey, this is what I do and they go, oh, I need someone like that. All right, cool. Let's work together. So that that is a big selling point of my business now. So I'm, I am focused on, you know, purpose driven individuals, business owners, entrepreneurs, athletes, because there is so much opportunity that comes off the back of it. It's a lot more than views and subscribers. 
or getting money from the podcast itself. It's like, hey, how can we build a business off the back of it? Mm. Like we look at Stodge, for example, and he's he's not quite there yet, but I feel like he's someone that's going to create something special off the back of his podcast. He wants to get into comedy. He wants to do all these like food reviews and stuff like that. And it's like he wouldn't have even really thought about taking action on that if he didn't start his podcast. From where he started to now, episode I think he's 21, 22. Mm. So he's already surpassed that statistic I gave before of 90% don't make it past 20. He's made it past there and I know he's in this for the long game. He wants to build something special off the back of it and they're the people I love to work with. Because every client that I work with, I, I'm i putting energy into you. I'm putting energy into your journey and what you want to grow. So I'm a part of the journey. I, I don't want to put my energy into something where they're just like, oh, yeah, I want to come in and get overnight success and get all these sponsors and millions of subscribers and views. I'm like, sorry, this is not the studio for you. I do not want to work with you because that would be so unfulfilling for me and a disservice to not only myself but to you if I went along with that. I want to help you grow because through helping you grow, you help me grow and we can all grow. We can all get a piece of the pie and that's what we're creating out here at Better Media and it is special and it's it's cool that I get to speak about it because I don't speak about it too often. It's just like in my head just speaking about it. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It is pretty cool and it's funny that you say that overnight success and a lot of people don't realize an overnight success is sometimes the work that comes in from five to ten years or sometimes even 20 years in the making. Some probably reach closer, they results closer than others but that's that trust within the journey and who you're going to become in order to get there and like I like how you use that storage was able to surpass the average people who've done less than 20 episodes and that's such a remarkable thing and that i think one thing i've learned over my time how important it is to have the right network with you and for those that are looking to be able to start a business what advice would you give to them in order to start building their network well, to build your network, start a podcast. <laughs> that has been a massive thing because you get to reach out to these people and be like, hey, let's jump on a podcast. If you just said, hey, let's go to lunch, well, why do you want to go to lunch for? You know, But hey, let's jump on a podcast. Like, oh, sweet. Get to jump on a podcast, get to share my knowledge, my value. It's going to go to our audience. I can use that content for my own like pages. So they're going to be more inclined to jump on a podcast, which is that, that icebreaker then you can, through building your network, it's like, okay, what are you passionate about? What are you good at? What are your hobbies? How can you turn that into a business? You know, mine was content creation. So I built Better Media off the back of it. You know, yours is, is wrestling, right? And I'm, you're building a business off that and doing coaching and everything like that. And there's so many different opportunities out there Money's everywhere. You can, it's crazy to think that you can make money off absolutely anything now. But you just have the mind, you have to have the mindset to be able to do it. Our parents probably look at us and be like, what the fuck are these guys doing? Like they should just have a nine to five job and work your typical, you know, office job or tradie or whatever the case is. It's like, nah, the world's full of opportunities. You can create money from anything and be fulfilled doing it as well. We don't have to hate what we do. I love this. It's funny. I can do this from 5.30 in the morning all the way up to midnight, have one meal and be so fulfilled. But if I go to work, I start at say 7, 8 o'clock, one or two hours in, I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. I just want to eat food. Like you're just so mentally drained because it's – it's not your purpose. It's not fulfilling. But you feel the shift. You feel the difference when you actually step into what you love and what you enjoy. And days like today, I said to you before, like 
my brain's a bit fucked because I've been doing this since this morning, but I absolutely love it and I appreciate the opportunity. It's it's been it's been awesome. That's incredible. It's kind of funny that you said that we can do anything nowadays. I was driving from the gym back to my place today and I saw this house that actually had learn how to swim and I'm assuming they put a pool inside their house. It's like, wow, you can actually start a business from anywhere, even inside your house. And that's how like you pretty much started your podcast and that's how a lot of people were starting their business and obviously especially with like our parents or people in that generation we're considered like weird and we're outcasts and they think we should be following the general population of getting a nine-to-five job you have to have a great education etc but we're open up to so much possibility now it's phenomenal yeah definitely definitely agree there's so many different opportunities out there it's just like as i said what are you good at? What do you enjoy? And just simply ask yourself the question, how can I turn this into a business? Because if if you have that that feedback loop in your head of, ah, oh, I can't do that, of course you're not going to do it. But if you switch it and reframe it of like, how can I do it? Then your mind starts thinking of, oh, fuck, how can I actually do this? Start asking more questions. Start doing your research. You find someone that's done it on the other side of the world. It's like, if this guy can do it, I can do it. And then you go and start it. But it's just about reframing and asking yourself the question of, okay, how can I do this? How can I build a business out of this? Mm. What's one thing that you want to be remembered by? Getting deep on me, eh? Um, What I want to be remembered by? What comes to me again is authenticity. So someone that was just his authentic self, who cared for others, who loved, who showed up. He was grateful for all that life had to give. Just a good, good guy, man. Like, I'm not... I'm not someone that's big on pride. It's just like, how can I be of service to others? It's not about me. And it's funny I say that because recently I've been saying, you know, you've got to put yourself first. But I say that because not in a in an ego or a pride way. It's if you put yourself first, that is how you're able to turn up as your best self and be the best in service to others. So just someone who was his best self, who was of service, who loved, who cared. And yeah, that's about it, man. That's awesome. And I just have one last question. So obviously you have a family and you have a daughter. What's one thing you want to be remembered for by your daughter and your future kids if you look to have more? Definitely have more. I told the missus four. Four, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I want a big family, man. I love Definitely, kids. that's awesome. I, I love kids, bro. Like my daughter, biggest blessing. Like she really shifted my life, honestly. And yeah, what I want to be remembered for, for from her is – A dad that was there that she could trust that she knew that no matter what went wrong, he was going to love and support her and not judge her and, and guide her in the right direction and allow her to be her authentic self and be her best self and give her the tools that she needs. But yeah, just to sum it up, just a dad that was there because – Unfortunately, there's a lot of kids out there that their dads are not there for them. There isn't positive parental role models in their life. And anyone, 
anyone can have kids, but not everyone can turn up and actually be a dad through thick and thin. So, yeah, just someone who was there, someone who turned up for their kids and was, you know, a true man that they needed, a true dad that they needed. That's inspiring. And, yeah, it's remarkable that you want to be able to be there for your children and you're giving yourself that opportunity to be able to create a future for your business where you're able to spend more time in the future with your children. And I'm looking forward to seeing where the beta project and beta media will go in the next five to 10 years and beyond that as well. And I just want to thank you again for jumping on. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, bro. It's been a, been an honor. <laughs>